I'm still recovering. Not going to lie from uh, this morning's post-game interview, but uh, obviously round two of the Pepsi Classic is underway. Um, a lot to look forward to this block, JT. We've got not only the top 12 to advance to uh, the Pepsi Classic match play tomorrow, but then uh, we'll know the top 24 who are going to advance uh, for Friday start of the PWBA Tour Championship match play. So we talked about it earlier that we would let you know, and we'll start going over the scores of the Tour Championship during this round. Um, Brianna Cote, this I know, is going very well throughout this week so far. Ah, um, I would say so. And she's been doing her thing. Sandra Gungora, uh, of course, if you missed it in uh, uh, earlier this morning, she is the round one leader of the Pepsi Classic and also shared uh, an excellent message, obviously. Uh, on what she has been going through. So, uh, JT, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, I did happen to catch your interview with with Sandra, and it was something to behold, for sure. Uh, So I encourage you guys to check that out. We're going to clip it out, put it up on social media uh, if you have a chance, and uh, get to watch her bowl here in game number one. We're out on the lanes now, and, uh, boy, I'll tell you, after watching that interview, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who are rooting for, for Sandra big time. I, w- I would say so. I think, um, as I mentioned this before, every time we've ever conversated or had a, an opportunity to chat with her, she is always genuine um, and very authentic. Uh, also willing to uh, share, certainly. And, and obviously she shared a lot, which which took a lot of courage. She did not have to do that, and she certainly didn't. Um, and I think it was it seemed to be good for her. To, to be kind of be able to, to release that uh, in a sense. And, and obviously it also helps, it may help someone else uh, at the same time. So we're on the lanes now. Liz Johnson, L.L. Bump with Summer Jasmine and Julia Bond along with Sandra Gungor, Shannon O'Keefe, Brianna Cote, and Brianna Andrew. One thing that uh, Sandra Gungor mentioned uh, was the, the uh, good props that she's had this week. And she's been uh, very communicative with uh, and good communication going on with Shannon, Sandra, and Brianna Cote about what's going on on the lanes. And I think she said that's helped a little bit, certain. Now, obviously, we watch Liz Johnson, a new career high, the GOAT. Liz Johnson, even at uh, this point in her career, still doing things that she hasn't done before and eclipsed her highest uh, consecutive string of strikes total. The 22 today. Wow. 22 across three games, 269, 300, uh, and then started with the first one in the uh, in game six. I think she said her previous high, I think, was 16. 16, wow. Which doesn't just – seems odd. Yeah. <laughs> For Liz Johnson only to have 16 uh, strikes. In the What's the most you've ever had in a row, Emil? I uh, barely got the two. Okay. <laughs> One game, I hope. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I feel like it's more than twelve across a couple of games. Uh, but you know, when it counts, I can only muster up twelve, and I've only done that once. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of strikes out there on the lanes this morning. Uh, we had three three hundred games, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yep. Three three hundred. Sydney Brummett. Sydney Brumman and Lindsey Boomershine in game three, and Liz Johnson in game five. But it also seemed like there were some low scores out there to be had if, if you weren't careful. Uh, you know, it's funny. People see a few 300 games, and they think, oh, my gosh, this is the easiest thing anybody's ever bowled on in the history of the sport of bowling. And uh, it is not, I assure you. There are lots of sand traps and pitfalls and hazards out there. If you don't get your feet in the right place with the right ball in your hand and stay ahead of the transition. So, Sydney, a perfect case in point there. Uh, she bowled 300 in game number three and then finished her last three games of the block with 191, 205, and 158. So, a little bit of work for her to do to get back into the cut here. She's in 31st place at plus 50. The cut line currently sits at plus 155 for six games. So that's a 225.83 average. And uh, as our, as you mentioned, Emil, our leader, sent, sent Sandra Gungora, pulled 256, 256 her last two games to finish out her block at plus 234. 
We've got a lot of other stuff to talk about, too, though. Neil, we've got there's actually two tournaments in one here. We've got the Tour Championship cut that will also be made at the end of this six-game block. And currently, those standings are filled through 18 games. And 24th place right now, that is the number all the players are looking for, is at plus 215, Lindsey Boomershine. And Dasha Kovalova is just inside of that number. And in order for her to win player of the year, she's going to have to make that cut. Uh, she had a rough start to the event in the Reno Classic, uh, but had a great block here this morning to get herself right in contention, not only for this tournament, but also for the Tour Championship which is, is going to be a necessity if she's going to end up winning player of the year this season. No doubt about it. And uh, <laughs> things are obviously looking on the up and up. Man. There were times in the Reno Classic, I, I didn't feel like she was really throwing it bad. You know, but you know, over the course of 12 games, obviously, and it, and it still could have been that point. Maybe she did not throw it bad, but clearly – just wasn't able to match up yeah. uh, on that particular pattern, the 37-foot clean condition uh, from a couple of days ago. I thought what was interesting about that pattern in the, the bowling that I was able to watch was you could, and, and Dasha, we all know she's pretty much invincible if you let her keep the ball in front of her. That pattern, you could only do that for a couple of games, and then you had to jump left and open up your angles, and I think that's probably the weakest point in her game. Uh, and it was exposed in, in, in that event. But this event, she's going she's gonna to be able to do exactly what she loves to do, and she's doing it well for the first six games of the, of the tournament. She's currently second in the Pepsi Classic at plus 232, just behind Sandra Gungora. And it's going to need one more good block here to not only make the cut into tomorrow for the match play for this event, but also for the Tour Championship. Hashtag Team No A pin early. The National Bowling Stadium has been uh, not too kind to players in eight pin situations. I don't know how I, about, how I feel about the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> not your not your first choice to bowl league. Uh, I would bowl leaguer, yeah. certainly. Um, I would remove the eight pin from the round. <laughs> It'd be cool to bowl leaguer. It certainly would. Don't say out with the front four. Julia Bond ended the block well this morning with uh, 279 to tie for 11 at plus 155 with challenge of keep. Players who uh, advanced to the finals yesterday, Stephanie Johnson is in the top 12 right now. And Brianna Cote is sitting in 10th at the moment. Really good group of players from 13 to 20 right now. Uh, actually, the 20, really the 20. And all the way down to the cut line at this point, or the cash line, excuse me. Dari Pio in 13, Shannon O'Keefe in 14, Tampa Ragsdale in 15, Verity Crawley in 16, Taylor Boltice in 17, Fulkin Higgins for Sear, Inkson Guerrero, Wachowski, McEwen, Dorans. Right now, Shannon Selman's just outside of the cash line. And 26th, and Shannon holding on to at the moment 20th in the uh, TC or Tour Championship standings after 18 games at plus 246. It's bowled well overall. I uh, now trying to grab a bunch of tickets to two match plays one tomorrow and one on Friday. Rick, since you said that, that means that perhaps we didn't see Dosh early this morning. Maybe we didn't see her enough. So, make a point to do that. 
And she's got the front four, Gurley. She's going to force us to put her on, Emil. I like that. You know, I, it's going to be really interesting. A lot of math tonight. Uh, we are going to try to focus as much as we can on the players that are fighting for spots in the cut, not only for the Pepsi Classic, but also for the Tour Championship. And as we mentioned, Dasha right now is just ahead of that number for the Tour Championship cut. And that's a number you do not want to miss because basically everybody in the field starts over again at zero. So even if you're 200 pins behind the leader, you're back to even. Stephanie, right. how good? Oh, go ahead, Emil. No, I was just going to reference Stephanie Zavala, obviously winning last night's Reno Classic. For those of you who may have missed that show, you should check the archives on both BoldTV.com as well as the Bold TV YouTube channel. I was showing her a little bit this morning and only got to plus 16. But she has begun this afternoon with the front five. I was just going to say, the only player really at this point who's in the player of the year hunt that is outside of the cut line for the Tour Championship is Danielle McEwen. And she's got a lot of ground to make up tonight. She's currently 150 pins back of the number. So her hopes of finally ho hoisting that player of the year trophy that she's been so close to the last couple of seasons could end today. Unless she can find a way to shoot a huge block tonight. And I think she's going to need 250 over tonight to, to make this cut. It's out there. It is certainly out there. And, and she is one of the players that when she catches fire, she, she can strike more than anybody. We've seen her do it in the past. And I know that's kind of a cliche, but we literally have seen her do that in the past. Wichita. <laughs> it always stands out. That's always a lasting memory for me. Stephanie Zavala, who is still an outside chance at that player of the year, but didn't bowl well this morning, shot 16 over, but off to a great start here out of the gate, front six. It's a good question in the chat there from Gary, and I did drop the link to the TC standings. Uh, they're in the same place that you would find the schedule for the kickoff classic. Just under the PWBA Tour Championship portion of things. Just click qualifying and uh, you will find that, but it is dropped in the chat. You can also get there by uh, selecting the info icon next to the chat icon here on Bolt TV. There were a few players that really got off to great starts this morning. There was no better start this morning than Sandra Gongora, who shot 279. She's an obviously great position. Again, if you uh, if you were able to, if you hung around, I should say, as Julia Bond is uh, perhaps just capitalizing on the success of the latest 007 movie. <laughs> and now you're doing her thing to start here in game one with the uh, spare six-backer situation. But if you hung around at the end of uh, this morning's block, and, I, and a big thanks to Curtis Von Kruger for uh, knowing that Sandra Gungora was the leader and uh, letting us know and asking if we had a chance or time to speak with her. Uh, 
because if not, then we would not have gotten uh, essentially what I call now the message and uh, the opportunity to hear Sandra Gungor, what turned into a quote or quote or what was a what we thought would be a normal, you know, let's talk about what happened in squad one, what worked for you, maybe what didn't, not the pattern play, turned into much more, more of a message of determination, a message of support, a message of uh, overcoming, uh, and a message really that everyone, I believe, certainly should hear, will hear it uh, on social media soon. If you just want to go back and just watch it at this very moment, you can. It's archived along at the end of uh, this morning block, but it will be on social media as well. Simply put, if you are going through something, and uh, there's been several players, I believe, who've been very open about some of their mental health struggles this year. Uh, it's all obviously a conversation that has moved itself to the forefront of our society, and rightfully so. Uh, Sandra led us, uh, they basically took us into the last year or so of her life, what she's been going through, how she's overcome it, uh, and now, of course, got a grand opportunity to do something very special here this week. Yeah, I just got word from Aaron Smith that that'll be posted shortly. And I mean, it's, I wrote a, uh, I wrote a piece in Bowler's Journal in the October issue about somewhat of, of the same topic. It, it was about the, the price of pursuing greatness. And it, it, it takes its toll. Uh, we, we, we sometimes forget the toll that Michael Jordan paid for being as great as he was. And, and Simone Biles, obviously, at the Olympics, uh, all of the criticism that she dealt with just, just because she was afraid she might hurt herself because she wasn't 100% mentally there. Um, and I even mentioned in the story Daniel Day-Lewis, who had a, a mental breakdown while acting in Hamlet. And a, a perfect example that we're watching right now, Shannon O'Keefe, we did a piece on her at the Queens that kind of showed behind the scenes of just how much pressure there is to stay on top. And it's... It's something that, as sports fans, we take for granted to a certain extent. When one of our athletes that we that we love isn't doing well, we're, we're very hard on them often. And I think as a sports fan, that's your right. But you also have to realize that it's a human being that you're talking about and you're saying those words about. So, but on the other hand, as an athlete, you, you, you have to take those things with a grain of salt and use it as your fuel to, to get better. Uh, but it's, it's, it's an interesting topic and it's something we don't talk about all that much is, is the other side of greatness and the costs of it. And it was nice to see Sandra share with us the, the struggles that she's gone through. And I, I, I think my favorite part about it was just you know, she could tell how much she loves bowling, and then when bowling went away for her, she seemed like she kind of lost her purpose. And um, it's really nice to see that a she's back to doing what she loves, and then it was able to incorporate the design work that she's she's done in the past into something a little bit more to help people that that are struggling as well. So again, we encourage you to check out the uh, the interview, but. Um, I'll tell you what, normally we don't root for people. Up yeah. here. We try to be pretty objective, but after watching that, it's hard not to root for, for Sandra. And I've always enjoyed speaking with her in, in the years that we've, we've, she's just a lovely person. Um, so, and it's, it's always surprising to hear when people, you know, go through tough times. I, I, I've actually spoken about it myself on Bull TV back in January when we had to kick off Classic and, 
Um, so I certainly know where she's coming from and certainly, you know, there for anybody in the community just like anybody else. There are, are a few scores being put up as we would expect early at this point and on the fresh. A couple of possibilities at 270 games. Stephanie Zavala being one. She can shoot 276. Stephanie Johnson. Shoot uh, 268. Steps on 47 and 48, which seems to be a very good pair. We've had two 300 shot on 47 and 48 today. Uh, Verity Crawley has seven out of eight to start. And of course, right here, Julia Bond was. Uh, kind of our leader in the clubhouse regarding potential high scores. I will be completely honest and say uh, I too uh, wish I could throw it like Verity Carey. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, COVID. You know, COVID... Uh, I think it, it just obviously did some things to people that really no one maybe even expected that. And maybe felt some things that you didn't know you could really feel. Uh, and to get in the place, uh, a depressive type state that you didn't think you could ever maybe get to. Uh, but yeah, it affected people obviously in, in, in that way uh, across the country. I'm very happy I was here to, to be a part of that. Even if I had heard it, and, and I would still take the same, I think, things away from it. But to be in it, uh, and watch her, and just give her the space to do that, that will be something I'll never forget. Uh, it's probably now a highlight of my uh, young intermediate career. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's... It's tough, and I think that this is the problem with with the issue is that there's there's for so long been such a stigma against against admitting that uh, that you you do have that issue and you, and you do think about those things, it, it, especially for men, uh, but I think also a lot for, for women as well. It, it's just not okay to express your feelings, and and. Uh, I think we got to get to a place where everybody understands that it's okay. And I felt like that was that was certainly the, the message in, in what Sandra was saying. And she's bouncing back here at the end of game number one in the block tonight. So nice little double there to bail this game out. Had a couple of open frames. In frame six and eight. And now can finish out with or bagger to bail this game out. One of the things we saw with our last pattern, obviously these two patterns have been very different in terms of the length and where the shape of the pattern has played. But pattern that one that one that one shows you we're not bowling on a leak shot. <laughs> Missed a little right there, and that one never had a chance. But they did tend to play a little bit tougher every single round in our last event. And we'll have to see. Obviously, there's a lot of strikes here this afternoon. But we'll have to see how the transition plays. It's always funny. You, you go out, and you, you see the transition over the six games, and then so you develop a, a game plan based on that, and then – you start a little different, the players play in a little bit of a different spot, and then it just doesn't turn out the same way. So, game of adjustments. Sometimes we make baffling adjustments. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Strike there for Brianna Andrew. One of our lefties in the field this week. Not many. She felt it pretty good overall. Uh, Joe had a great question in the chat this morning um, and asked if we think, well, what do we think Brianna Andrew might learn or could learn from crossing with, you know, three players like the Brianna, Shannon, and uh, Sandra. Uh, and and then uh, we talked about that. Ali Tatro was actually in the, in the uh, chat at the time. And she's had some experience, obviously, as a young player on this tour. We had some other individuals chime in about that as well. The observation was one, certainly watching, paying attention to how people go about their business. Uh, she's also had the pleasure of rooming with other players, like uh, this week she's rooming with Bella McDaniel, also a young player, Kayla Crawford, young player, uh, but rooming with Valerie and Kelly. So it's a golden opportunity to ask questions, get some knowledge, and, and share in um, anything that involves improvement. It's hard to do at this level. Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, just basic, basically, you, you, you learn how to play the lanes right. Because <laughs> Shannon is easy. never plays the lanes wrong. And, and Brianna Cote, I mean, there's no player in the world right now who's bowling better than her. 244 for Jay Bond. One more for O'Keefe. And we'll be off to game number two. And if we were to remain on this pair, let's see. 53. We'll see Kayla Crawford, Darren Pio, who had an excellent spare conversion uh, or split conversion. In game one, Saki Mukatani and Shannon Puchowski. Diana Zabialova, Stephanie Zavala, Abby Ragsdale, and Wendy Bartier Jimenez. Um, let's see. If we keep it here, we'll have Dasha on games four and five. Eric specifically asked about Shannon Sellins. Where is Shannon? Shannon might get to us in game five if we are to be here as well. I didn't know JT wrote a story. I'm going to have to read it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know he still did that. Thing. Well, uh, Bob Johnson retired from his didn't post really? at, at Bowler's Journal. How about that? And so I, I volunteered. To, oh, it's big shoes. I, it, it is. And you know what's funny? I've, I've I have many Bob Johnson stories, but Bob, my the first big junior tournament I won was a tournament called the Canoga Park Eliminations, and it was part of the Western States Eliminations. It was one of the qualifiers. And when I won, I was 14 years old, and. The person who interviewed me for the uh, Pacific Bowler was Bob Johnson. So, yeah, first my first uh, big thing, and then I ended up doing Bob Johnson's Hall of Fame video, made his Hall of Fame video, and um, I've been good friends with his his wife. Uh, I bowled juniors with her, Michelle Garcia. She was one of the top. Uh, junior bowlers in Southern California. She, she was so good that they uh, moved her up to bowl against the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so one of one of the few uh, the, who who had that distinction uh, in my era: Julie Gardner and Michelle Garcia, and then Neil Milligan, Halva at the time got that honor, and then Missy Parkin. I thought that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, I found out that uh, Bob was was retiring, and I offered my services and looking forward to next month's column, uh, the November one. It'll be about the, the television broadcast and what, what we can do to innovate them a little bit. Mm. And then uh, in December, we'll be talking about Cobra Kai. <laughs> 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 it's 
So if you like Karate Kid and Cobra Kai and you're very curious about how what that has to do with bowling, read the December issue of Bullish Journal. So when do you and Jeff collaborate on that? <laughs> call it. We don't. I did try to get Jeff to name my column for it because Jeff is really good at naming things. And but but he he was having a baby. His wife was having a baby at the time, so he was his brain power was so occupied with uh, naming the child that he couldn't name my column. So I came up with the name myself. I was actually quite proud of it. I don't even want to know what it is now. I just want to pick up the magazine and, and, and read it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is out on new newsstands right now, so be sure to check out the October issue of Bowler's Journal. And a lot of great content in there. Uh, Joe Jaquez, who's here this week, is writing for Bowler's Journal. He's done a lot of great stories here this week already, uh, but did some really fantastic coverage of the U.S. Women's Open, and his story on Josie Barnes is featured in the October issue. Uh, Jeff Goodger, the aforementioned, Jeff Goodger wrote uh, another hilarious piece on comparing the difficulty of conditions like those found at the U.S. Women's Open to a, a bad day at the at the park, which was absolutely hilarious. So be sure to check that out. Plus, uh, Dennis Bergendorf's great work and John Mark as well. So. Quite an honor to be part of that crew writing for the Bowler's Journal. Game number two underway here. And getting to watch Diana Z, who's been knocking on the door recently, trying to win that fifth title. Victory has eluded her so far this year, but she's shown signs, especially towards basically after the Queens, that she's feeling good about her confidence. She had made the, the, the switch over to Storm and feel, appears to be fully confident with the uh, the ball changes and has, has been really knocking on the door lately. Made the show at the U.S. Women's Open. It's just been bowling well, seems like every week. And uh, Daria Payok as well. Sorry, has made a number of match play finals. Got off to a little bit of a slow start after the layoff and the visa issues, which caused her to have to miss a number of events at the beginning of the season. Currently plus 158 after seven games here and Diana Z at plus 202. So Vala bounced back after a slow start this morning with a big game to start the block and Abby Ragsdale is at plus 116 so she's right there in contention here. mentioned plus 155 the number to make the top 12 after six games so big scores here As soon as we get our score updates, we'll let you know. But uh, 
Danielle McEwen is just off to the left of our featured pairs, and she's off to a fast start with the front four here this game. Again, she's kind of the last, the one player with the chance for player of the year who is on the outside looking in at, at the top 24 cut. So going to need to throw a lot of strikes here this afternoon. All right, folks, game number two here underway. We've just got four more games after this. And we'll know our top 24 in the Tour Championship and our top 12 in the Pepsi Classic for the match play finals tomorrow.
Well, folks, hope you've enjoyed the coverage over on Facebook. We gave it a few extra frames. We're going to go ahead and sign off over there. But uh, in order to keep watching, head over to Bull TV. Get your subscription. You know, you're not going to want to miss the rest of 